Welcome to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys. Big breaking news as of course you will know we will get straight down to it because Kevin Prince Boateng has officially joined Barcelona on a loan deal until the end of this season and he will become the first ever Ghanaian to play for FC Barcelona. Barca will be Boateng's parent club Sassuolo 1 million euros for the loan deal and we will have the option to buy Boateng permanently at the end of the season following his loan spell which would cost us a fee of 8 million euros and on his arrival in Barcelona Kevin Prince Boateng expressed his delight at signing for Barcelona he said the following I'm so so happy it's a dream come true and a dream for all children to play at this club and that is why it's such a great honour for me to play here and he was also asked on his arrival about previous interviews and tweets surrounding Real Madrid that have been brought to light since his signing and he said basically don't ask me about Real Madrid don't talk to me about Real Madrid that's all in the past now my only focus is on Barca and I want to score in the next Clasico at the Santiago Bernabeu and I think in many ways there that already tells you everything that you need to know about Kevin Prince Boateng both the player and the personality he can be unpredictable and he can certainly have his questionable moments but once he puts on that Barca shirt I genuinely believe that he's going to do everything to help us and in this video we are going to be looking into the positives into the negatives and exactly how he is going to help us this season and what he can give as a backup centre forward. Yes, he is signing as a centre forward. He's transformed. But how? How has he done that? And what is he going to provide? in the Blaugrana shirt. But we will start off talking about Kevin Prince Boateng's background as a professional footballer and he's certainly a name that many of us will recognise straight away right across the football world whether it be for good or controversial reasons with regard to Boateng. He's a player who's played at a number of high profile clubs right throughout his career and he's often shown a lot of quality and flashes of real brilliance during that time but with that often comes with questions surrounding his attitude especially coming off the field with a few problems. But with Boateng Boateng signing on a loan deal until the end of the season. He's only going to be here about six months in total. Hopefully we can see in that time the very best of Boateng in the minutes that he's given and hopefully he can focus 100% on the task in hand, the role he's going to have here and he can fully apply himself and his talents to this Barcelona team. And when you look at Boateng's career, you can certainly see here we have signed somebody with a vast amount of experience, not only in one league but in several different countries, several different competitions. He's played in the Bundesliga, he's played in the Premier League, Syria, La Liga as well. He has La Liga experience as well as appearing in the very top level, the Champions League, where he's featured on 33 occasions, both for AC Milan and Schalke combined. And look, Boateng is coming in. He's a veteran. He's 31 years old. He'll be 32 in March. But going back to the very, very beginning now, where it all started for Kevin Prince Boateng, he started his youth career at Hertha Berlin back in 1994, before many of us here were even born. He worked his way up through their youth system to the first team he made his debut in professional football in 2005 where he then went on to make 53 appearances for Hertha Berlin before he left the Premier League for the first time to join Tottenham in a £5.4 million move but he only ended up making 25 appearances during London during that two year spell which also included a period on loan at Borussia Dortmund. In 2009 Boateng swapped London for Portsmouth in a £4 million move where he enjoyed a very successful season there featuring on 27 occasions but it was in 2010 that he made the big move in his career, eventually moving to Milan in Serie A. 7 million euros it cost to take him there and he did tremendously well. He was a fan favourite, really enjoyed by the fans and it was actually with Milan where Boateng played the most times of any club throughout the course of his career and he won the biggest title of his career to date, Serie A, back in 2011. Hopefully though, of course, Boateng will go on and win big trophies here in the few months that he's here and during his two spells with Milan in total, he made 114 appearances scoring 18 goals and providing 16 assists in the process and I'm sure many of you will actually remember that two of those 18 Milan goals that Boateng scored actually came against ourselves in the Champions League one of them coming in the group stage in 2011 that was a stunning solo goal by Kevin Prince Boateng and one that you'll have seen Barcelona themselves promoting that goal and one in 2013 during our 2-0 loss of course at the San Siro we came back from that one but Boateng did score in that home tie and it's safe to say that in both moments 
Prince. We saw the quality of Boateng, but that was several years ago now. After that, he went on to Schalke. Ten million it cost to take in there. He made 60 appearances, and it was Schalke where Boateng's negative behaviour was well documented, with his contract being terminated by the club at the end of 2015, where he then re-signed for Milan for six months of that season. After that spell, he was sort of out in the open. He was there to be taken on by a club who wanted to take a gamble, and it was Las Palmas that took that chance on Kevin Prince Boateng, and boy, did they reap the rewards. Because for me, at Las Palmas, working under Kike Setien, Boateng enjoyed one of the best seasons, if not the best season, in his career. Really enjoying his football, understanding the way of playing, buying into the philosophy, and I'm going to be talking more about his spell at Las Palmas when we talk about his style of play in just a minute's time. But again, at the end of that season at Las Palmas, he again cancelled his contract, move on to Eintracht Frankfurt in the Bundesliga on a three-year deal. He made 36 appearances in that season, but again, he left at the end of the season, didn't see out his contract, and moved on again, returning to Syria, joining Sassuolo last summer, where he went on to make 15 appearances in all competitions this season, and ultimately, that was where he attracted the interest of none other than FC Barcelona. And of course, with Boateng, his international career is just as colourful as his club career, because despite being born in Germany, Boateng chose to represent Ghana, the nation of his father, and he actually has a tattoo of the map of Ghana on his arm, and also the country's name right across it. A very, very proud man, and like I say, the first ever Ghanaian to play for Barca. But unfortunately, again, due to those off-the-field problems, he had a problem with the coaches of Ghana, especially he had a problem with the Ghanaian Football Association. He didn't make as many appearances as he should have and could have for his country, only appearing 15 times between 2010 and 2014, before his international career really ended at the World Cup in 2014, being sent home after a row at the time with his coach. And I think you'll agree there, that is some journey from Kevin Prince Boateng right across the course of his career. There's been plenty of ups, there's been a lot of quality, flashes of brilliance, a really good character in there, but ultimately there's been plenty of downs as well, and a lot of question marks about himself and his personality off the pitch. And I think ultimately there, there's a career of what might have been if he really had settled down somewhere and performed and applied himself consistently and really tried to perform week in, week out. But like I say, if he can really knuckle down here, give everything, really understand his role, buy into the philosophy, perhaps for a few months here, we could get a player who could make an impact. And with regard to that performance, we now move on to the vital question about his style of play, and in particular, what is he going to bring as a backup centre forward? Because make no mistake about it, Kevin Prince Boateng has spent the majority of his career as a midfielder, and not even an attacking one at times. He started off his career in a deeper box-to-box role, somebody who was always aggressive in the way that he played, he was strong on the ball, he looked after the ball, he was very, very competitive in the way that he played, and as his career develops, perhaps so did his skill set, because he started to move further and further forward on the football field, and he's been having a lot more impact in the final third in recent seasons. And his transition from a midfielder into more of a forward really did accelerate under the stewardship of Kike Setien at Las Palmas, which, like I say, was one of the best periods of Boateng's career. He thrived under Setien, he really fitted into his fluid style of play, passing and moving, that was what Boateng really enjoyed doing, and that gives me good confidence now looking at the Barcelona system and the similarities between the two. He scored 10 goals in 28 La Liga games for Las Palmas, providing 5 assists, which also include a Puskas nominated goal that he scored against Villarreal, which really was Boateng and Las Palmas at the time at their very best. And in terms of goal scoring, his season at Las Palmas was certainly his best. And so Boateng continued playing in that forward type role at Eintracht Frankfurt and likewise in Serie A this season. And in terms of his goal scoring this season at Sassuolo, he's basically averaged a goal once every three games, notching five times in 15 games in all competitions, which when you look at that, he may have equaled or even bettered his best goal scoring season had he continued at that rate for the full season. But this is where it comes now to the stats, because I wanted to compare Boateng in a forward role, playing as a number nine or a false nine, and I wanted to compare him with our current nine, Suarez, our recently departed backup, Munir El Haddadi, and our previous number nine, Paco Alcacer, just to give you there a diverse range of different type of forwards. And if we start first and foremost here with the shots per game, combined here with key passes per game, because what we're seeing here is basically who is most active in the final third and who can really be productive in that area. And as you can see here, Luis Suarez comfortably comes out on top, really active in the final third. He gets a number of shots away. He also creates chances for his teammates. But look there, Kevin Prince Boateng is comfortably in second place, not all that far behind Suarez in terms of shots and exactly the same in terms of key passes. Boateng there taking on more shots than Alcacer, a lot more shots than Muni El Haddadi. Clearly, in the final third, he can be productive 
productive, he can get involved, not only in terms of getting off shots, but also creating for his teammates, which at Barcelona and the Barcelona forward is very important. But obviously, at Barcelona, it's not just about shooting on goal and creating chances. You've got to be able to receive the ball in tight areas, manoeuvre yourselves around packed defences, and that's why it's very, very important as well to look at a player's touch, and in particular, how many times they either lose the ball through a bad first touch or they lose the ball through a bad dribble. And once again, it's not a tremendous surprise that Luis Suarez does come out on top. This time, though, in a more negative way, with Suarez's first touch certainly not one of his strong points these days, but of course, his goals and his assists make amends for that. We're not too concerned. But can we say the same for Kevin Prince Boateng? Because clearly here, he's not quite up to scratch in terms of his first touch. He will lose all the balls in that way, and he also does run into trouble when he does try and take on dribbles. Clearly there, he is losing the ball more often than the likes of Alcacer and even Munir El Haddad. But is that because he's taken a few more risks? Is that because he's a bit more of a vocal point in number nine and maybe not such a silky player as the likes of Monier is, but he might be better suited as a number nine? And that's the big question. Can he be productive enough in that final third when it really, really matters to make amends for the flaws that he does have in the other areas of his game? That is the big question because my conclusion here would be that we basically signed a 31-year-old midfielder who's been converted into a forward and somebody who's had disciplinary problems in the past. But you could see that given the right circumstances, in the right role, on the right occasions, at the right time, this man here could come off the bench and give us a different outlook. He could come off the bench, cause problems, he could be described as a nuisance, but at certain times, in certain games, that might be just exactly what we need. He could start a game against lower opposition, he could cause problems, he could give Suarez some vital, vital rest in key stages of the season, and that's what he needs to do. Boateng needs to focus, give everything he's got, take a leaf out of Arturo Vidal's book and really apply himself on every occasion, on every minute that he's given. And if he does that, and if he really, really does focus on doing that, he's got a very good chance here that he could be a success. And come the summer transfer window, there's every chance that we'll say, look, thank you for your service. We appreciate your time at the club. You've played a part here in hopefully creating history at Barcelona in the titles that we've won. And then he'll go back to the swallow. I don't think that at the end of this loan deal, even if he does brilliantly, that we're going to sign him for 8 million euros. Because in the summer transfer window, he will have been a stopgap. We'll be in a position then, having spent just 1 million to get him here, to actually go out in the summer transfer window and spend some serious, serious money to bring in a genuine heir to Luis Suarez. A long-term forward who's going to play for Barcelona for the foreseeable future. But in the meantime, we've got Boateng now to do something over the next few months. He's in the twilight of his career. Come in, have an impact, knuckle down. This is the opportunity of your entire career. Go and take it. And I'll thank you all, guys, as I always do. Thank you very much for joining me here today, and thank you for your support and basically listening to my opinion. But as always, I want yours. What do you think of the signing of Kevin Prince Boateng, and what do you think that he'll bring to Barcelona? Leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. Lots more videos on the way, of course. But until next time, as always, Visca El Barça. Ooh.